right so students welcome back so now i've started with your 2016 paper as i've seen in, when i did the electrochemistry videos most of them are i don't know you're not following it up i felt okay i'll start solving all the papers at a stretch with all the topics together done so now i picked up 2016 ge paper in this let us read this first question so in this first question what is this a stream of electrons from a heated filament was passed between two charged plates kept at a potential difference of v uh, esu okay if e and m are charge okay e is a charge and mass of m is a mass of an electron respectively then the value of h by lambda where lambda is a wavelength associated with the electron wave is given so i need to find the value of h by lambda so when such question is given to you first important thing h by lambda where do we learn this we have learned this energy term like uh, in the relation where we study de broglie's wavelength isn't it right so we will learn we will just come back and recollect de broglie's de broglie wavelength so in de broglie wavelength <coughs> what should you uh, remember and kinetic energy also so both we'll speak in terms of de broglie wavelength and kinetic energy so according to this de, according to de broglie wavelength lambda is equal to h by p this is what you have studied and what is p if i take out p is equal to h by lambda i need to find this quantity now isn't it yes now kinetic energy what is kinetic energy if i have to speak kinetic energy uh, of an electron how do we write e into v isn't it both the quantities now i'm relating both right so because i need to find for h by lambda co uh, concept now i'm coming back and we know we also know uh, one more formula for kinetic energy kinetic energy is equal to p square by 2m so these are the three formulas which you should remember so now when I have to speak when kinetic energy is equal to ev p, uh, kinetic energy is p square by em now relate both ev is equal to p square by 2m done right p is equal to if i take out p how much p is equal to root 2 m ev isn't it i'm multiplying cross multiplying this root m ev so uh, h by lambda now what is p now i said p this thing i'm relating p is equal to h by lambda nothing but h by lambda is equal to root m e v that's it so what is the option the option uh, the uh, correct option is root m e v c is the option done let me come back and solve the next question here what do they give me they've given me one more uh, this one organic uh, part let me solve that thing and come back now what do they give me yes in this question yes careful they've given me to solve just see <coughs> two chloro two methyl pentane on reaction with sodium methoxide in methanol yields so they've given three products oh, sorry four products and options are given i need to solve so let me come back and do that here what do they give us two chloro two methyl pentane on reaction with sodium methoxide in methanol they've given this so let us write 2 chloro 2 methyl pentane first so what is 2 chloro 2 methyl pentane let us write pentane first 1 2 3 4 5 this is pentane 2 chloro so in second carbon second this one and this one is methyl so what is this treated with it this is treated with sodium methoxide he said what is sodium methoxide formula ch3 o n a is sodium methoxide in the presence of methanol this it so ch3 o h is methanol now what happens what is important thing you have to remember this particular thing your uh, uh, methoxide o o this this particular i'm talking about this one this is yeah yeah your methoxide oxide is a very strong nucleophile so and uh, what is the role of this uh, methanol methanol is a polar solvent both the things this is a strong nucleophile and this is a polar solvent so what is the product you get elimination product uh, elimination will dominate over substitution you have to remember that right so this being a strong nucleophile this being <coughs> an uh, polar solvent elimination will dominate your substituent substitution products so you'll be getting three different products what is the first product you get you're going to get now elimination first let us write elimination a cl and na you get c c okay now this uh, uh, this will break here och3 now this became uh, uh, this one isn't it removal of uh, cl this is one product now the product which you get this is less yield very less yield now suppose if i have to write the leftover products right so leftover product i said this dominates now you also get two products now elimination i said apart from this you also get an elimination from here you get a shift of bond so you get two more products like one two now if there is a shift here there is a double bond formed in between these two see ch2 ch3 okay now this is yeah one more carbon this is one product one more product which forms here is c 
CH2. Now what happened here when this got eliminated you got a double bond here in the second product you get a double bond here in this case right this is CH3 right both the products right so you have to remember first double bond uh, will be here and the second double bond will be here so this these two are more yield Let us come back and solve the next question that is your third question. So in the third question what do they give us which of the following compound is metallic and ferromagnetic they have asked me. So they given us the options CrO2, VO2, MnO2 and TiO2. So most important thing this particular uh, question uh, right uh, you have already studied uh, in your uh, solid state the different types of uh, metallic compounds different types of uh, covalent compounds ionic compounds. So you have to remember first three elements that is iron cobalt and nickel so ferromagnetism at room temperature right so cro2 right uh, when i have to speak the specialty of this is it is also metallic as well as ferromagnetic in nature it is like uh, that is the reason we use it in your uh, magnetic uh, tapes isn't it so the option would be cro2 so remember CRO2 is both metallic as well as ferromagnetic. So, option nothing much to explain in this. Let's come back to the next. Step. So, which of the following statement about low density polythene LDEP is false? So, when you speak about LDEP, LDEP is low density polythene as a property suggests this particular low density polythene is very weak, isn't it? The bonds are also not strong enough like HDP. So, they said which is false. Let us come back. It is a poor conductor of electricity. Yes, it is right according to LDP. Next, it's in the this requires dioxygen or peroxide okay we studied about peroxide initiator as a catalyst that also we studied this is also related to LDPE so first property is low, low conductive electricity because of weak uh, this one and next is it requires peroxide okay then they said it is used in the manufacture of buckets dustbins etc wrong isn't it this particular manufacture of buckets dustbins etc it's done only by HDP HDP only is used because it is strong enough because of the cross links that is used for uh, manufacture of buckets dustbins so I can rule out this is the false statement let's, let's let us see the next question its synthesis requires high pressure okay that also is not related all three one two and C A B and D are related to LDP and the only option which is odd men out is HDP that is a yeah, manufacture of buckets so the option is this right now next one here what do they give us here they've given us for a linear plot of a uh, log x by m so log x by m where did you learn you have learned learned the concept of log x by m in which which isotherm it is friendlich adsorption isotherm this is what you have studied isn't it friendlich absorption isotherm so okay let me write adjacent to this only right let us write okay now write it here right here friendlich adsorption isotherm this is what you have adsorption isotherm this is what you have studied so in Friedrich adsorption isotherm what is what are they asking they are asking you have drawn a plot log x by m versus log p in Friedrich adsorption isotherm it's okay which of the following statement is correct okay in a graph in Friedrich adsorption isotherm when i have to take you have drawn you have got a linear plot it seems okay we have got a linear plot right in that plot log x by m versus log p log x by m versus log p right so you have drawn log x by m here and log p here this is what they said and they said you also got the following statement is correct and again you also got an slope you need to find the slope isn't it now they're asking among that whole equation what is 1 by n appears as an intercept or log only 1 by n appears as slope log 1 by n appears as intercept okay for solving all this let us come back to the formula and see so what is this Friedrich adsorption isotherm is x by m extent of adsorption is equal to kp raised 1 by n correct now you're going to take log on both the sides take log x by m and here also you're going to take log p 1 by n okay you can also write it as log x by m is equal to 1 m 1 by n log p this is also there correct now you can uh, simply write so this is equal to a straight line graph y is equal to mx now see here log p x m x done mx plus c plus uh, log is equal to log uh, 1 by n okay log p we have written uh, as 
this one and uh, 1 by n 1 by n is c okay this is the slope done i got a straight line graph with the formula using the straight line graph now see what is on the y axis log x by m done what is on the uh, this an x axis it is log p which is also done now what is uh, uh, this one the intercept which we have taken now k also is there isn't it we have left this k here so this is uh, a bit uh, this one i should write log k okay log k plus 1 by n okay i'm sorry for this now again once again log p is in the x-axis 1 by n is a slope c is the intercept right so this is the thing because of the lack of place once again x by m is on the y-axis log p is on the x-axis done 1 by n is on uh, this one 1 by n is a uh, slope and c is intercept let me show that so once again y axis i'm done x axis i'm done i'm left with the slope slope is 1 by n what is the intercept which i got is intercept is log k so what is the option which you have to remember so 1 by n appears as an intercept only 1 by n appears as a slope log 1 by n appears as intercept both k and 1 by n appear in the slope term so in the slope term everything they're speaking about a slope here also intercept so let me see 1 by n appears as intercept wrong next only 1 by n appears as a slope that is also oh, okay this is correct log 1 by n appears as intercept this is wrong both k and this one is wrong so the option is 2